Hey everybody, Gormos here and this time I got another Star Citizen video. In this video I will talk about the improvements the new patch brought and this time the footage will focus more on PvP matches, unlike the last video where I showed you cooperative PvE gameplay. I do have just this short PvE clip at the start to show you a bit of the PvE gameplay in the new patch as well and also to have a bit of footage of the M50. That one is free to try for everyone this week, so I got to test it a bit and it's tons of fun if you like fast maneuverable fighters. It reminds me a lot of flying an A-Wing in X-Wing vs TIE Fighter. It's not the most balanced ship right now, but tons of fun to fly and CIG already said that most of the ship's balancing will come later. Now, as always, keep in mind that this is still alpha and you might see a hiccup or a leg spike every now and then. I am still not the best Star Citizen player, I don't have much time to play it, but I think the game is nice to look at nonetheless and I hope the dogfight footage in the asteroid belts of Broken Moon is entertaining to watch. Anyway, let's talk about the new patch. About a week ago a new patch came out for the Arena Commander module, version 0.9.2. Now, at first look the patch did not look as impressive as the one that came before it. Not much along the lines of new ships or new game modes like in the last one and I did not plan to make a video about it at first. But after trying this new patch my opinion has changed. I would now say that this is most likely the most important patch the game had yet and that is because of the substantial improvements to the controls this patch has introduced, especially the aiming with fixed weapons, as well as UI improvements. Now, to explain that, let's talk about how it worked in older Star Citizen versions and what has changed since then. Well, originally all the weapons on all the ships in the game were gimbaled and had a certain auto-aim feature. You basically just aimed straight at the target, your crosshair would turn green and the weapons would auto-aim at the target. Now, as far as I understand it, that was a placeholder system right from the start and it had a few problems. First of all, not all ships in the game have gimbaled weapons, so the auto-aim would not work on them as soon as the fixed weapons on those ships were implemented. But more importantly, a lot of players do not want auto-aim. Most, including myself, prefer to aim their weapons themselves as it requires more skill to do so. So the next step for the game was to get rid of the auto-aim and replace it with lead indicators and also the introduction of fixed weapons on ships like the Aurora or some mounts on the 300i for example. Now, the problem however was that it was often very challenging to aim those fixed weapons. With fixed weapons after all, you have to aim the nose of the ship directly on the target. With gimbals you do not. That was frustrating for many players and it also presented a big balancing problem, because stick pilots can't effectively use gimbals while maneuvering. So even when flying a fighter with all gimbaled weapons, like the Hornet, a stick user would usually have only fixed weapons and be at a great disadvantage over players that could use the gimbals on the ship. There are ways to use them with a stick, like Drag IR, but that is not perfect either, but more on that later. Well, the aiming trouble with the fixed weapons was down to not having enough fine control when trying to aim for the small lead aim point. Players had the tendency to overshoot the point they were aiming for and then overcompensate and overshoot the other way. That was in part due to the fact that the ships in Star Citizen have to abide by realistic physics and have to overcome inertia in order to stop a movement, so it won't be instantaneous. Now, to address this issue, CIG have implemented something they call ESP, or Advanced Stick Precision. Now, how does that work? Well, a simplified explanation is it adjusts your joystick's sensitivity on the fly when your crosshair gets closer to being on target. It basically smooths out the control if it detects that you want to aim at the target. In reality, it is more complex than that. I will put a link to a more in-depth explanation in the video description if you want to have a look. Now, I have to say, the first time I heard that this was planned, I was not very enthusiastic about it. I thought I would not like having the game mess with my input and that it would feel weird. But now that I have tried it, what can I say, it works and it works exceptionally well. Aiming fixed weapons is now a lot smoother and it is no problem to stay on target with them. That is a massive gameplay leap, 
Gimbalt weapons don't have the huge advantage they had in the last version of the game and that helps to balance out control methods as well as ships with and without Gimbalt weapons. That leads to the game in its current form being the most fun I ever had with it and that is why I consider this patch the most important one yet. Now CIG said right from the start that they want a fair balance between all control methods and I would say with this patch they have for the most part achieved just that. There are still a few concerns and I will talk briefly about one but for the most part I would say we have a good balance at the moment between all the control methods. And that I think is an impressive achievement. I was skeptical at first that this could be done. Some on the forum still say that mouse and keyboard with gimbaled weapons have an advantage over fixed weapons but since this patch I disagree. In all the flying I have done in the 0.9.2 patch I have never had the feeling that I was ever at a disadvantage because of my control method or because of the fixed weapons. Still I would like to see one small change. I still think it would be nice to have the possibility to change the gimbal mounts out for fixed ones and trade the gimbal in for another slight advantage. Nothing big, maybe a little bit better heat dissipation or something like that, so that players that don't can or want to use gimbal weapons don't have to choose a weapon mount with a wasted ability so to speak. Now let's take a look at a few other nice changes and additions in this patch. Let's start with a bit of an update on the Track IR implementation. Patch 0.9 introduced Track IR support and that greatly improved the game for me, but there were a few issues I had problems with. Luckily they all have been fixed in this patch. The small graphics bug that let you see the rear of your helmet when you looked around is gone, but more importantly the newest patch has introduced an option to lock your gimbal weapons in place. Now you can use the Drag IR to aim gimbal weapons and even the turrets like the Hornet's Ball turret. That is very cool and immersing, however Drag IR is of course made to look around, not to aim and is in a lot of situations just not quite accurate enough to do that. So while using your head movement to aim weapons is a cool feature, it is more something for special situations. In 0.9 you could however not fix the weapons in place so your track IR would always control them if you want to or not and in many situations that could be a disadvantage. Now since you can lock the weapons in place in this patch this problem is gone. You can have the weapons bore sighted for normal use as I have in the footage and with the press of one button slave them to your head movements if needed. I for example had a situation where my ship was too damaged to still maneuver and I had an enemy approaching from the side. Now I could not bring my nose around to shoot at him but I could switch the weapons to track IR control, swing the hornet's ball turret around and fire to the side. Now being able to do things like that is just cool. So with the addition of the possibility to lock gimbal weapons in place I would say the track IR implementation works pretty perfectly now. now the UI in this patch also got changed a bit and it looks a bit more subtle and realistic in my opinion. But the big difference is that the lead aim point was replaced with lag bips. Previously we had lead aim points similar to what you had in old space games or wars on the arcade for example. Now we have lag predicted impact points which means instead of a lollipop sticking out of the enemy's ship to show you where to aim you have those lag bips that show you where your shots will end up at a certain distance. That distance is of course coming from the target you have currently locked. That in my opinion works a lot better, looks better and it's also more realistic as modern fighter jets use a somewhat similar system to aim the gun in air combat. Now because not all the weapons have the same projectile velocity you often have more than one lag bips. Most ships have two at the moment as they have two different type of weapons but if you mount enough different weapons on your ship it could be more than that. So the pip for a weapon with a slower projectile speed will be further behind than one of a gun with a faster projectile speed. Now a lot of players seem to dislike the multiple pips. I have to say though I personally like the idea. In close combat I can usually get both pips on targets anyway if the difference in projectile speed is not too huge and at longer ranges I use the weapon with the highest velocity as it is the most likely to hit, but I seem to be in the minority with this opinion. 
Now, since I have quite a bit of PvP footage in this video, there is something else I want to address. One question that often comes up and is discussed about PvP in Star Citizen currently is the time it takes to kill an enemy ship. Some argue that it takes too long to actually get a kill at the moment, and if you watch the footage you might have noticed that player ships, while they can be damaged relatively easily by hitting the right spot, often don't die very fast, especially compared to the AI Vendul ships. Now, I actually think that in this case it is a good idea to have player ships that take a bit more punishment before they are completely destroyed for a few reasons. First, you have to keep in mind that the Arena Commander module we are currently playing provides very fast based action with unlimited immediate respawns. The actual game of course will however play in a persistent universe without respawns. The Arena Commander module will still be there for training and maybe tournaments, but it is just meant to be an in-game simulator so to speak. The consequences of losing your ship in the persistent universe are more severe. If you lose your ship it will not respawn, it will be destroyed and that's it. Now you can insure your ship for some extra money and if you do so it will be replaced. The hull at least, the equipment needs to be insured separately. But even if your ship was insured, that replacement will not show up immediately, but will be delivered when a new ship is available and that apparently will depend on the in-game economy. A cheaper ship will be replaced sooner than a more advanced one. But even if you have another ship ready to go already, it might take you a while to get from your hangar back into the action. On top of that, not just your ship, but your character can die too. If that happens, you will basically keep playing as your original character's heir that has inherited the ships. So, because of all that, losing a ship should be something a little bit more special, not something that happens every few minutes. And therefore I think it is perfectly fine that it takes a bit longer to finish a ship off completely. Now, another reason is, with the complex damage model, precise aiming is rewarded more. As you can see, you can shoot off a lot of parts of ships before they die, so it helps to know where weak spots are and to hit them precisely instead of just shooting at the ships in general. For example, when you get the jump on the Hornet and you approach it from the rear, killing it completely from behind will take a long time, but if you aim for the wings, you can take them off very fast and the weapons that are mounted there with it. And this way reduce the effectiveness of the ship, even though it is not completely destroyed. So it pays off to be a bit more accurate and think where to shoot in what situations. That is why I think the somewhat long time to kill is fine as it is. Sure, the damage model itself are most likely not 100% implemented yet and not balanced yet, but for the most part I think it already works pretty well. Overall, I have to say, the latest patch massively increased the playing experience for me and reading the forums I know I am not the only one with this opinion. This patch was a huge leap forward when it comes to gameplay, it seems things are coming along nicely. And at PAX Australia, CIG also showed some footage of the upcoming first person shooter part of the game and that looks nice as well. It seems with the FPS module they want to have a more tactic based experience. Of course, wearing future space armor you won't die instantaneous either, but again your character can actually die doing this. There will also be a bit of a medical system in the game that reminds me a bit of armor with mods. You can drag a wounded teammate to safety and treat him and get him back in the fight or at least save him from dying. Depending on the wound with first aid or you have to reach a medical bay. That sounds like an interesting experience and I can't wait to try it. Well, and this is it for this video. As always, I hope it was entertaining, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.